They say the statistic is 90% of traders fail, but I don't think that's a really valid statistic because trading is the hardest profession in the sense of you versus you. And that's my saying. And the reason to say that is you versus you is because you have to understand yourself from a very limiting beliefs or traumas like because think about it if you have a strategy you should be able to execute that but what stops people i say there's five stages in trading there's learning you're learning how to execute you're learning the markets you're just learning the you yeah. know the basics and the fundamentals and then that goes into the struggle then the third phase is a breakthrough and then it will be consistency of that and then right now for me it's well, welcome to another in the series of the alpha capital group trader interviews We've got some heavyweights on board today. <laughs> and the first in the ring is Danny Chung. It feels like some like boxing <laughs> match. It's like round one. What's going on, man? Nice to meet you. But obviously, Thanks. it's the first time I've ever met you. And already, we've had some great banter off, <laughs> off air. I'd love you to just dive in and tell me how, how you started in the markets to start with. Never... With trading as a whole, is yeah, it that, that journey? What, what got you into that? Where did you start in your life? Well, I started like, we had an incredibly tough childhood uh, growing up. It feels so weird just going from one to the other, but it, it really was. And there's there's no sugar coat in it. Everyone's got their story. I'm sure you've, yep. you've got yours. Um, my mum was a single mum, just working three jobs to make it happen. And it was a long journey of like trauma and pain. Like when you have that, right? And everyone's got their story from that. How that all coincided into trading really was because we had so much financial difficulties. Right. And so you needed a way out. Exactly. Yeah. To some degree, yeah. And I, did, I got a master's in mechanical engineering. But when I did that, I see that the ceiling, when I was looking at it, it was like 100K max. Like if you get a charter ship, you do all of that. And even at 100K, it sounds like a lot of money, but after tax. Once you're tired, we were just saying earlier, and if you're living in London, half of it's gone before you start. Exactly. So you're probably taking home like 60K. Then if you look at the cost of living right now, it's actually crazy to, to look at it. And the inflation in, in terms of how much people have earned, how much things have cost is not gone in proportion. But anyway, the, the point of all of that was... I knew that there was a problem. I just didn't have a solution at that time. It was like, I broke, I'm sick of it. And the turn, like the real big money turning point for me, there were many turning points in my life, but in terms of trading was, I had one Christmas that I literally was already in overdraft, was already in negative, and that I had like five pounds to last me a month. And, and student loans building up as well? It was already, yeah, yeah, exactly, overdraft. And plus the student loan, I had to wait for the next student loan to come in. <laughs> yeah. it, is, it was, it was a, a character building time because it's like people... That's why I never, ever, ever judge anyone from any part of their stories because when you've been through that hardship, you know true pain and true suffering just to survive, you know, like waiting for like the bread to go on sale for like 10p just to eat that for like a day. So, but I made a decision and this is what I always preach is you are where you are from the choices you've made. Sometimes that might not be the case, you know, that could be just a card you're dealt, but you can go where you want to go with the choices you make, right? So being broke was my situation, but staying broke was a choice. Deal with it. Yeah. Exactly that. So then... I knew that that was the first step. So with that, trading started to come in to, to, to play because finance, I wanted to work into finance. Well, finance really is truly is, is money. And right? with your mechanical engineering, did you do any trading before that? Were you, Not were you really, doing, no. Right? It was just, I studied for two years, three years, worked three jobs as well because I saw you're a product of your environment and parents. My mum worked three jobs. I worked three jobs. I worked, you know, at Marks and Spencer, a warehouse and then a nightclub. So I just did as much as I could. Did everything. Yeah, right? exactly <laughs> that. But... The problem was, is like even though I was making money, none of it was staying, none of it was accumulating, and that's maybe financial literacy now looking back at myself. But trading, that captured me because of the freedom. And I think trading is like the biggest fuck you token in the world. Like if you work for a company, you have to have a boss, or if you do sales, or if you have drop shipping, there's clients, there's business, there's all sorts of stuff, right? Even content. All, like and all those awkward moments. Exactly, yeah, there's awkward moments. Like, yeah, exactly <laughs> that. But whereas trading, you do what you want, when you want, with who you want, and how you want. That's true freedom in my opinion because I don't report to anyone I can do it anywhere I can be in my fucking boxes in Bali I can be in London in a suit I don't care you choose and that's what trading really was and I found that from a newspaper where this guy spent 24 grand on a night out in Mayfair which I couldn't even fathom and he did trading so that's how trading all sparked up then what's supposed to attract you to the yeah, 24 grand yeah I was like <laughs> if this guy's spanking 24 on a night yeah. out I want to be where that yeah, night yeah, is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do you know what I mean it's crazy now thinking about it I've actually it is, done it's, the, it's always those images the TV film the film yeah you, exactly you that dragged in. and I know like we give a lot of hate to like social media is like ah oh, the Lambo and all the flexing and all that bollocks but 
It's inspiration to some degree, but I think it's just been taken too far, which is why there's a new, obviously, wave of content, a new wave like Alpha Capital are doing really mm. well, are paving a new professional way um, for the industry, especially the, the prop firm industry. So it seems there's a lot of like blow smoke up your ass type stuff, isn't it? Exactly. We, yeah, wanna, we just want to cut through that. Yeah, it's fucking bollocks, but I think it will change because people are getting smarter now, people are getting fed up, and it's changing. Um, so, yeah, well, that's that's pretty much how I, I kind of got into it. Then I so worked, when you say you got into it, what did you do? Well, I found out about it and I was like wow what's this guy do he's a trader and I was like what is a trader and then I started to dive down and like like simple just google that kind of stuff and learn it and it really clicked for me it was like I want to try this I want to work in finance and see what it's like and then I worked in a brokerage firm FX broker okay. and I worked there for a year and a half and that's where I met my mentor because he was trading so we could see the back end right so we could see obviously their trades what they're putting through oh, so you, you back up I mean, a lot, I've known a lot of people throughout my career that have come through that way and you, yeah. you get a fully rounded view exactly you know? and because I saw he made and this was years ago remember the euro swiss franc floor mm. so this was a, like a, a mind blowing for me so think about when i started on the story i said i had like five pounds for a month i literally saw someone turn 13 grand into 2.3 million when the, he was short in the swiss floor right and because he was so adamant that You're i don't care run out of money. yeah <laughs> running out of money made no sense whatever like no matter how fundamental he had regardless 10k to 2.3 million to see that and to see him withdraw it was like whoa like that is incredible yeah in like a couple of weeks because he already scaled his position as weeks before then obviously floor randomly just dropped right and then a thousand pips plan strategy staking yeah and then i was able to converse with him and then he was just telling me how he approached it and i was just like wow like the opportunity is there and the abundance is there and then another person who made 150 grand in one day just one trade i was like whoa like the, I'm on like 18 base with commission. The most I could probably make is like 40 in a year, which isn't bad at that age mm. I was, but still it's like, and then after tax, get into this? and then it, you spread betting tax free, right? And then he had a, obviously another source of income, but then spread betting was a secondary, so tax efficient. I was like, whoa, like this guy's doing nothing. Looking at, he sends me photos of his acres of land and his deers. And just takes one deer. Yeah, he's like, oh, I've got some deers today because that's what you. That's lunch sort. Yeah, yeah. Was, <laughs> I just thought, yeah, exactly. That maybe actually. I never heard of the deer after. <laughs> um, but yeah, he just told me that, and I was like, it's just insane. So the opportunity and the money and the monetary value was just insane. And these people were incredibly normal. Like they were normal in the sense that, like you and I, we can have a conversation. You can talk to them. They're not nothing like astronomical. They're not yeah. like the Elon Musk. They're not like, oh. Yeah, just normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, sorry, mate. <laughs> no, they're normal people, and. The fact that they're normal people, it means that I could do it too. It's not the fact that I'm better than them or anything like that, but if they can do it, I saw them like that I could do yeah. it. So I asked my mentor to mentor me and then the whole journey of that became obviously So that's with real money then? And yeah, yeah, get, I was trading. you get a credit account? With no, I put in £500 pounds and I kept blowing that shit for like two years. <laughs> <laughs> like an up and down roller coaster yo-yo. Trading and what? Just trading. It was actually the FX market. So it was okay, GBPNZ. So yeah, I started off with uh, GBPNZD, GBJPY, GBPUSD. It was actually most of the sterling and most of the euro. We'll put that on screen for everyone. He said it so quick, didn't he? GBP, yeah, <laughs> man, I say it so often. It comes so quick. <laughs> but I used to actually trade so many markets because what I learned and what he taught me back then was to scan in the morning. And we have, uh, it was a very technical and mechanical approach to trading. Trading. So we looked for is Haikanashi. So Haikanashi yep. is an average of candles, which makes decision making so much easier. And when you have that, I was just scanning through the markets every single day, just literally like 20 pairs, just drop, 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 drop. Until you see the setup of four hours, 30 minutes and 10 minutes all aligned and it looks good. That's the pair I'm going to focus on today. It's actually kind of confluence. Correct. Ideas, yeah, there? exactly Everyone that. Wants, yeah. And then as soon as I wait for that confluence or that setup and it looks good, then I plan my trade and then trade my plan. But over the years, digress, that's completely changed. I only trade DAX now, which is the German uh, 40, not 30 anymore. German yep. was still 30 on some, some brokers. But uh, And the reason is because of maturity of my trading and the improvement of the edge of my trading because with the German 40 it's very linear the way it moves because obviously from, from the macro point of view yeah it's a lovely index I mean, exactly yeah. especially right now it's with new all-time highs with the yen yeah. and the whole situation China's just coming back on board exactly that yeah and then once you have that tied in with technicals because so many people were like fundamentals is the one technicals are my shut the fuck up like both of them like it's, it has to be both yeah it's a balance like they're both as important as each other and um, with that, DAX has just worked imperatively well with, with my strategy. And that's kind of like a short way of explaining how I got to that and what I trade and how I trade. So how have you got on with that then? So I'm, I'm new to this industry mm -hmm. in a few months and 
I started off being told there's lots of scamming going on, and yeah. then the whole thing has yeah, blown up. Have you, you got any out there views on what the hell's going on? Yeah, I think. Well, first one, EAs. Right, let's 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 put some controversy shit. Yeah. If an EA like I can't fathom like me and Alex laugh at this all the time. It's just like it's a fucking face palm. <laughs> to- I can totally not, let, yeah. let go with my mind. Yeah, I like I could. We cannot comprehend. Or I cannot comprehend why people fall for like scams, but. I also understand, no, I can't really. It's just, you have to get scammed to get scammed. Because like EAs, if it, profitable EA, as you can see, I'm getting worked up. If an EA is profitable, <laughs> think about it. Like, would they really truly sell it? And let's just say, hypothetically, an EA works, okay? If the EA works, that's because of the individual person who has built the EA, the person who algorithmically understands the strategy of the EA, and also the person who's built it knows how to model and manually manage that EA. You can have, it's the same thing as a strategy. I can have a strategy. I can give it to 100 people. And then we'll do something different with it. Correct. Yeah. Only 20 will, will work it out 30 may fail 10 so you cannot sell an ea on its own to work and if the ea was so good right this is the next step like use your brain and common sense is not common but if an ea is so good why don't you just invest in the the, keep, the fund and the fund and manage the it because we've said this all, all over like the broker years as algos have come in taking you know building on the manual inputs doing the algos and the algos you can build it to take away the edge you, this is why tom demark why the Elliott Waves and stuff all started to disappear and reinvent because the computers were all taking you to the levels. Exactly, and then not just that as well. So not only do you have that, you also have strategy cap and then obviously your edge loses it when you have so many people using it as well. Exactly that, because if the model is so profitable to some degree, you can only use it to some degree because of the amount of filling and liquidity you're providing, like 100 lots, you can only do that X amount. You can't go to... 200 lots, 1,000 lots. So if you've ever seen 1,000 lots on <coughs> like on, like on on Instagram or whatever, it's just bullshit. It's just, how can you get filled with that without being slipped like 100 grand? Well, massive. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly, right? right. You could, I mean, this yeah. is like the real markets. And you, you, you get people moaning when they get small slippage on data. And mm. so it's like, well, you go and speak to a market maker in real time. He's not there yeah. to bend over, is he? He's there to exactly. make a bit of money. And I, th- I think it's the lack of education because they're such in a retail world they only know the retail side but when they've been in an institutional side and a professional side you need to understand that so then to put on the positive spin on it it's like prop firms like alpha capital is i always say prop firms are like a stepping stone it's a guidance right because like mm. you have rules that you must adhere to if you can't even adhere to that bro you've got no chance you trading. don't even read them do you? Like, you can't even how are you going to trade... defend yourself when you don't read the rules <laughs> exactly how are you going to trade a 10 million dollar fund how are you going to trade private equity? How are you going to try and invest the capital when you can't even do a demo account with some fucking basic guidelines? <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you know what I mean? But if you can, it's true, like next level financial freedom. But yeah, like EA was the one that. So, that's what you're really saying, the premise of EA is great if you use yeah. it as a tool for, for yourself. But yeah. Other than that, you're being sold. You can't sell it, you can't package, buy it. I just don't understand how people just think that it like can comprehend like I'm going to buy this this is going to be my life changer it just makes <laughs> it just makes no sense um, so the guy actually another story is the guy I share the office with he has 150 million AUM he builds algos and even he like this is a guy that's profitable with an audited fund right 10 years audited track record none of this like oh yeah look at my unregulated statement <laughs> <laughs> this is a track like audited track record even he's saying like no matter if he gives his EA he can't give his EA to me because even if he does give it to me how do I know in what conditions is that going to work? And what's market cycles that's going to work? When do I know when to turn it on? When do I know when to turn it off? When do I know when it's working? When do I know when it's not working? When is risk on? When is risk off? When is the strategy cap? What, what's the maximum fund I can have? It's just so much like more in detail. Well, this than- is like first principles, isn't it? And you can tell that you've brought yourself through, you've educated yourself, you've done courses, been with a mentor. Mm. I just get this sense of so many people looking for this magic dart and mm. what's going what's to do it for me. I don't want to do the hard lines. I don't want to know what that all means. Just the do it ticket. for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking for the easy way in. I think that's the like, that's where the shift is coming because I think you're right. That's why so many people got scammed and so many people are in that series is because people are looking for the fast way out. People are getting sold on the lifestyle. People yeah. are getting sold on the smokes and mirrors. But I think there's a slow change to that, especially the same with this, right? The podcast, Alpha Capital, when you see a full hour of someone who's been in the industry and someone who's got some experience to have a proper conversation, it's like, well, actually, these guys are really speaking common sense. It's just this common sense is not being put forward to them because all they've had before is just retail stuff. Because if you think about it as well on defense, is the only way retail people can 
they don't have access to the institutional side. They're not going to no, get so FCA understanding. They're going to get defensive, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, so you're not really going to understand that. So, yeah. So, yeah. so, so oh, that's your first gripe. <laughs> I think it's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Where did you build yourself up to next then? You'd started trading, you, were, you started making money then doing this? Yeah, so it's failed for four years. Um, so just repeat that, because this is coming up a lot in all just the pods I've done in a few months. Yeah. The real winners have blown themselves up so many times and yeah. most ordinary people would have walked away. Yeah, I think like they say the statistic is 90% of traders fail, but I don't think that's a really valid statistic because I say there's five stages in trading. There's learning, there's the struggle. So learning, like you're learning how to execute, you're learning the markets, you're just learning the, you yeah. know, the basics and the fundamentals, what drives the market price, what's GBP USD, I mean, it's the dominant pair. Like, Most GBP. people take driving lessons, don't they? Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, yeah. And then they can't pass the test. And, that's the sh and then that goes into the struggle, right? They understand, well, okay, cool. I have a possibility to make money. The How much money I can make, the lifestyle that it can create, and then the abundance, right? You really, oh, actually, there's a strategy. There's actually an edge. I can make some money, right? But that comes with the struggle. The struggle is then really staying true to yourself, following your trading plan, like yeah. the over-trading, the revenge trading, understanding yourself, because trading is the hardest profession in the sense of you versus you and that's my saying and the reason to say that is you versus you is because you have to understand yourself from a very limiting beliefs or traumas like because think about it if you have a strategy like a total trader right if you've read that book yep. if that strategy is given to you to be fair and let's be honest if i give you that you should be able to execute that right and just on a mechanical basis if i give you my strategy this is what you wait for it takes you two months to understand you're it. gonna Any have some degree of success you should be able to do that yeah. but what stops people it's the psychology, it's the beliefs, and the deeper answer is the love for themselves. And that sounds so deep and so crazy. And it's because if you think about it, you're doing self-harm by not sticking to that strategy, but you know you're not sticking to it, but you still so you're do you're telling it. me you love yourself? Yeah, I love myself. That's it, that's true. But <laughs> well, I love I myself because I had to find myself. But yeah. I, it, that's why trading is so hard in that sense. So that's where people give up because you can't stay, like how do I say this? You have to really be humble enough to really understand that. I'm the person that's causing my like downfall. I'm the person. Well, that, it's not looking for someone to blame, isn't it? You've, it's, accountability. You've got, you've got to own it. Yeah. Exactly that. And then I think that if that statistic, if we push past that, there'll probably be a much higher rate of actually like success in that. So then, yeah. So the second phase is struggle. Then the third phase is a breakthrough. I think in trading, like you finally find like your aha moment and then you start to see the green balance come through. Yep. And then it'll be consistency of that. And then right now for me, it's scalability, which is, okay, cool. We've got the edge. We've got the track record. We've made some money. What can we look at next? So funds, private equity, uh, hopefully more like studying and to take on more funds and things like that. But yeah, it took me four years to be profitable. And stage five? And then, yeah, stage five is scalability. Oh, so scalability. learning, struggle, breakthrough, consistency, scalability. Oh, sorry, I missed the consistency. Yeah, yeah, yeah consistency. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Catching me out there. He's testing me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Can't count, motherfucker. How does he make money? He can't even count to five. <laughs> it's quality. Yes. Um, so yeah. where are we then on the uh, on the scalability? It sounds like you've got yourself set up lovely. You've got, you're on a German strategy. And how does that play what you're yeah using it's good the, i mean i think this will entertain alex who's sitting there lovely is uh at 2.5 million and uh tft <laughs> and sft <laughs> yeah i'll say and like i've lost that funding and i uh, i had 22k payout and i got a coupon instead <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> what, to, come, to come back to the my, my next scam, M and S. Yes, mate. Got, you got a bit. That's funny. I got a, <laughs> a coupon. I got a coupon to go back to phase one. So uh, yeah, life is good. <laughs> How you left? How do you feel with that? Oh, mate, I mean, as good as I could feel. But <laughs> on the spin on that, as funny as that sounds, I didn't. This is yet again another move. Is I'm at, I got to two point five million funding. I lost 900k. Uh, I'm going to say got, that's not all with one firm then. No, You've no, you can't do that. Yes, yeah, so we had Alpha Capital. Um, we had uh, FTMO, True Force Funds, TFT, SFT, Fundingia. We had like, pretty yeah. much the main firms well, that are really... Good, yeah. yeah, the main ones. You say the main ones. I had two shit ones that fucked me up there. But it is what it is. And that's part of the process of, of prop firms. But yeah, on the scalability side, got to 2.5, lost it all. And then now I'm building back up. I'm at 800k now, and then I've got another million in challenges. So I should try and pass those. But as we said, with so few people passing, this is the kind of a, a realm that people look at and think, how on earth 
can you do that? Surely that's going to mess with your head. What's that? Sorry. That once you start getting the large scalability, does anything change with you, or are you? No. You're now so systematic that it just. It's just <coughs> I think numbers. it. I think it does, but I failed before, and um, I actually was obviously I traded before, and then I had a trial account of it was a it was a demo account, but it was a trial account for an investor at that time. Right. I did 100k. It was fine. Then it went to a million, and it was not fine. I know, like it's easy to say one percent is one percent, two percent is two percent, but when you when come, the big numbers. Oh, man, like a couple of years ago, I couldn't even afford food on the table, and you're showing me like 10, 20k balances fluctuate and floating. That doesn't matter. Yeah, you're telling yourself that doesn't matter because it's part of the system. It's part of the system. And you, you can't. You go and talk to your partner or your yeah. family, and they go, What the hell? Yeah. Like, and then you have to, like, I'm like closing early uh, and drawdowns affected me. But since then, because that was obviously more real money at that time compared to now, this is like demo money. It's not really affecting me, but I can see how that affects certain people. But the power is, is copy trading. Like Kyle, aka okay, Jacob, who's done five million, he literally just had one master account at hundred k, and the rest just just copy. And the same with um, you've got Andrew coming on soon as well, yeah. mate. I don't even know how this guy does it. Six point seven million funded. The fuck? I don't even know there's that many firms you can and, get funded. And just, with. And just, just keeping track of it in every hour. Right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Even he said it, we had a conversation. He said it was stressful just to manage that many. At two point five million, the ultimate that was plate spinning, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Literally... What Carl says that's a really good analogy. Yeah. It's just a plate spinning. He's got one firm and he's got six point seven. That's literally like twenty firms. And then. Even on the good side, like payouts, man, that was hard to keep track of payouts at times because you're like, okay, got 20K here, 10K here, 5K, I need to, you know, keep- and time in the- Time you, in the Make sure on the right day. Yeah, like... you forget about it. And then I remember when American times, fuckers, isn't it? They got the days and the months to run around. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you wasted my time logging in. Where's that gone? Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, you missed that? It was yesterday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that's, uh, just that's the scale. Today, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just lost today. Lost my body. But yeah, that's the scalability side I'm on at the moment. And I probably, I generally think two million is enough. And then I just want to carry on building that, just play the prop firm game, and then just work on building the other aspects of it. And from life. a personal development side, are you going to stick with the prop world or is there an ambition to go on to do something else? Um... My end goal is more my family. That's it, really. Like, I, I want to set a family office up, like, just enough funds where that family office owns my real estate, other businesses, just many things that they all set up for generations. Yeah. And um, everything I do and every move, every calculative move I do now is for my kids, really. Um, my daughter to live whatever she wants and my son to really try and take over. So whatever business or whatever we take on is all really for them. That's really my aspiration. There's nothing... Num numerical or anything like that it's just for my kids just to make sure that when they look at me and be like cool my dad set a really good like bar he was integral he was honest and he was a real man not like my said. daughter who said yeah, <laughs> you go on Instagram I'll, I'll, I'll die you kill me I won't be able to talk to my friends <laughs> no man it's cool she saw stuff coming on the other day and just walked out the room like, <laughs> dad's kicking it with me now we're best mates you know I mean? he's, he's one of the cool kids <laughs> trust <it>. me <laughs> we we'll get you in a Lambo with some sunglasses. No, no. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is, like you say, this whole image thing, you can't get away from the reels, can you? It's just not... Yeah, yeah. Well, I think the thing is you've got to play the game because at the end of the day, nowadays, everything's social media. It's your digital resume. But what you say and what comes out of your mouth and it's how there you... there forever, isn't it? Yeah, and how you speak is a different story. You can look as cool as you want, but when you meet the person in person, when you see him in a podcast, how is he handling what is actually coming out of his mouth? doesn't make actual any fucking any sense. sense. Yeah. Which it, it actually that brings me back to something you started with and you mentioned it and I've seen it on some of your social music. Financial literacy something that is yeah. it's close to your heart, isn't it? And what you want to yeah, it's crazy. bring out to masses. I think it's crazy because if you think about it, like Ray Dalio, Right, yeah. who we all must respect and understand, and like I don't know him on a personal level, like he's my boy. <laughs> like I would go for a beer, like. But it's it's the idea that he who has a billion dollar fund has a book that you can buy for fifteen quid. That people don't buy that. Tony Robbins, who is a well established. I mean, he was around when I was a kid. Yeah, I love oh. Tony Robbins, and Tony Robbins changed my life. And he has a book called Money Master the Game, right? The Seven mm. Steps to Financial, like free, well, Seven Steps to Financial Freedom, and. It's so simple how none of this stuff is taught in school, but it's there on the bookshelf, but no one will go and reach for it. But someone will go for a night out. Someone will spend money on an iPhone, the latest clothes, the latest this, the latest that. But no one will invest in their knowledge where there's a saying in Chinese is Shu Zhong Zia Wong, meaning that the golden house, which is subjective to the gold, whatever that you desire, 
is in the middle of the book. So if you want financial freedom, that's in the middle of the book. If you want to build a real estate portfolio, that's in the middle You've of the book. Get that. You've exactly. You want to get regulated, yeah. that's in the middle of the book. You want to know how to communicate, that's in the middle of the book. Because these people who have written these books are serious, like heavy hitters. It's like £10, you can buy their book, understand them, learn one nugget and your life can change. And yeah, financial literacy is key because you can make all the money in the world, but there's that, you understand this, right? You, there's that lifestyle copy. You make 100K, but you spend 80K or 100K. You make a million, you spend a million. Well, that doesn't mean you're wealthy it's just because no, you're spending exactly the same shit. Bling, you? Exactly. Oh, no. But if you're making a million and you're only spending 10 grand, you got 900 away and then you put that into multiple assets and then now, say you put a million in real estate that's doing 5%, now you've got 5% a year to live off for the rest of your life and that's not including the capital appreciation. If you want to sell it because it's liquid there, I know it will take some time to sell it, then you can diversify it into other assets. Even just as simple as investing in the S&P. Like, Traders try to, like funds, try to outperform the S&P. But people think, oh, 10% is not a lot. I should do that in a day. It's like, bro, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Like, does that make any sense? But this, this, that, again, that's a good point while you're here. Let's let's talk about that because... The S&P? No, well, no uh, just returns in general. What, oh. what is realistic for people to make if you haven't got this compounding thing? So, you know, I've been talking to people on risk reviews and trying yeah. to get them to understand that you should be scaling when you're doing well rather than yeah. expecting to knock it out of the park from day one. So I'll give two different perspectives because I think prop firms, you can't really have the same risk to reward or the, or the return or the percentage aim because at the end of the day, it is somewhat gamified, but there's somewhat, you have to play it, right? It's the mm. system's completely different from personal capital. Now let's start off with personal capital or even personal money. Personal money is real money. People fucking forget that. That's real money. Like people say, oh, I'll make 10%. But... What is the stress tolerance of that? What is the risk factor involved? You make, say you make 10% a month, hypothetically, okay. But what does that entail? Does that mean I have to be an 8% drawdown? Does that mean I have to lose 20%? Like, what is the stress of that? And if you think about it, no one's going to give... In, in these markets, the, the vol at the moment is exactly. ridiculous. Imagine that. I'd be like, okay, look, if you give me a million, but I'll put 100K, like, floating. <laughs> You know, you might lose 100K and I might make you 100K. I don't know. Like, 50 50, let's see. That, that just makes no sense. No one in the right mind with real money would give you that. But if you're if your risk is low and the returns are still good, it's about, it's about looking at the bigger picture when it comes to real money and scalability. I know 2% doesn't sound like a lot, but on average, it's literally 1% to 3% on average is most of what my peers make and most of what yeah. I would aim for. And, it, and it's it, off an initial outlay. So much lower than that. Mm. Massive gearing. Exactly. That. And that's because of the amount of capital. And then, like I said, we go back to the number of fifth thing we said was the scalability. Because the numbers are so large, you can't be putting that much risk on the table for, for, for other people, for funds, and there's a lot of responsibility. It's wealth preservation as opposed to like accumulation or making money. I think I've always said it's more, it's more important, that, in fact, to... To know how to preserve it, how to stay in the game. Preserving until wealth you get, is until hard. Until you find the run. Yeah. And then you play around. And it's true because if you say you've made your first 100K, and the preserving that's hard. Everyone thinks like making a million is amazing. Like, oh, okay. But people think, the average herd think, how can I spend it? That's why it sounds like a lot. I could buy a house, I could buy a car. But really and truly, if you invest it, what can it really yield you? Does it really make you truly financially free? Does it really pay for your whole family, your trips? Like, it, is it more than mm. enough? Not, not really that much. So it's, you have to really understand like the fundamentals and the basics of of what your goals are, financial literacy, wealth preservation, and just money as an overall. But then let's uh, quickly tap on prop firms as well. But prop firms are a huge opportunity. And that's because the risk factor, or in in the case of the argument of wealth preservation, there isn't any really, because you pay alpha capital, like it's like $800 or $1,000 for the 200K challenge. Once you've got that refund, that's that. That's it. There's literally back again. Yeah. There's zero on the table. So if there's zero on the table, the opportunity is in abundance, but the risk is zero. So it, this was a mistake I made last year. It was too conservative because I was just aiming for that 1%, 2%, 1%. But because of that, we were not tapping into the potential of what prop firms can do. So therefore, there should be securing the refund and then really aiming for like that 4 or 5%. Where, however, and do you do you reinvest me. straight away? Do you go and buy another challenge or? Yeah, I mean, I've got challenges just sitting there all the time. Uh, when Alpha Capital give me a wicked discount code, <laughs> just let them <laughs> sit there. Um, yeah, I just kind of have challenges sitting there, so I can trade them whenever. Uh, one of the biggest things is I rotate. I know a lot of people copy trade, so I rotate because I feel like that's the easiest way to manage your risk. So, for example, if I'm due a payout, wait two weeks. I might. There's no point trying to trade that. 
right? And I could just, just leave it. So yeah. I'd trade another challenge or trade another funded account and just keep rotating and rotating and rotating. Different and rotating. strategies within them. I mean, like we had Greco on a few weeks ago and he's, he has a portfolio of strategies. Oh, wow. No, I just, I can't, I, mentally I can't do that anymore. Mm. Like uh, I think, yeah, I have two strategies that we, that I've built over the years. But it's when you have so much, it's like the spinning plates you love to, like there was a really good analogy, is with trading, one thing, one pair, one setup, one trade, one session. If it's there, it's there. If it's not, it's not. I've got other things to be focusing on, to be building, to be working on. Um, it works for you. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that, that. that's what's key. As you were alluding to earlier, people are trying to find this holy grail. It's yeah. got to be you. You've got yeah. to own this. It's yeah. got to make sense Exactly to you. that, exactly that. And I find that when you when I trade the best is when I don't care. Like, literally and truly, I come in, is there a trade? Yes or no? Done. But when I trade the worst, and I hate myself for doing this, is when I sit there staring at the charts all day, trying to force a trade. And, and just... you're full ported and <laughs> I'm wearing every tick. You already yeah. know, yeah, like full ported that shit. But like, yeah, full said, yeah, just being an absolute numpty. And that's actually how I lost that 900k funding because I was just being a numpty. Yes, and that does bring on the, the emotions, doesn't it? And the revenge. Yeah. And, and whichever way is it categorized. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you're a. You're big into psychology, aren't you, of all this? To some degree, yeah, yeah. I think that I try to have a balance, like the yin and the yang. I feel like I try not to go too much. In, like Too much of anything's bad for you. Too much gym, too much drinking, too much... <laughs> we'll gonna, question that later. Uh, yeah, I'm going to bite, bite my tongue there. <laughs> 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 There's a bad influence as Alex is sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> He's just crossing you off yeah, on the like list. That. <laughs> no, that's about four trips you're missing out on there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. But yeah... <laughs> So what's the, what's the future then? You, you've got your scalability. Yeah. I noticed you've been talking online a lot about um, kind of education stuff. and Yeah, so... Are you in, on an Edemy or something? Or? So we have... Um, Udemy, isn't it? Yeah, Udemy is Udemy. We have uh, quite a few things. So a, a trade, we've got real estate, we've got investments, uh, we've got a franchise we're building. My uncle has import, export. We have developments and have the biggest development project in my real estate career happening, hopefully this year. Even if not, I'm just happy to be able to have this opportunity across my plate. Um, and it's just managing all of those as managing all of those is great the next I think the most exciting one out of all of this is mentorship not my education I have an education as well to teach people to trade and mentor them and stuff yeah. but it's Brunel Uni that's what I went to and um, it gets I guess is the deeper one they keep that quiet we're an imperial here so they're really they're quite, quite, quite rivals <laughs> well, aren't they really? imperial rejected me <laughs> so fuck, fuck these guys and that was actually the best thing we're actually speaking about that rejection and all of that stuff I was a I wasn't a naughty kid but I just didn't care for the school system and you know we had our troubles and mm. I never really understood and not having a father there's a lot of like I don't know, just maybe like anger issues built up internal things. And I didn't study very well. And I Which makes it to, even more impressive how you've, you've put discipline into your life, isn't it? And into your trading. Yeah, because I think the goal was to be the dad I never had. That mm. was the true goal. My wife blessed me with that. And because I have that, I'm in a very grateful state. And if you're in a state of gratitude, you're in a state to receive. And also very, very more spiritually and religious for God as well. But the, the main thing of Brunel, and actually going back on the topic of the the next major step I'm most excited about is Brunel was sometimes in life it can be tough it can suck and I know it's sometimes it's not fair there's all this you know victim mentality and stuff yeah. but also especially I think as men as well when we try to like hold it in, we try to tackle it we try to do all sorts of stuff it's just a helping hand like I'm not asking for sometimes I'm not asking for a handout every day I'm not asking for everything just you know I mean a little boost just so I can just get my just take that first step just mm. stand back up again and uh, Brunel was that hand for me because I was in a very bad uni. It was very rough. It was terrible. We had, I mean, course mate passed away. My housemate was beaten to a pulp I've never seen in my life because of racism. And it was just, it was, it was, it was an eye opener. And that was goes back to what we said earlier: is I am where I am because of the choices I made. I made the decision not to study hard. I made the decision not to care about where I was going, and I'm here now. So. I'm sure if I worked hard and if I can have an opportunity, and like I said, Imperial, Southampton, all of these denied me from going there because obviously I had crap grades and yeah. whatever. But Brunel said yes. And they were top 10 for engineering. Well, Brunel, the engineer, right? Mm. They were top 10 for engineering. Uh, I think it was like six at the time. And for the sixth best uni in engineering to take me on in that was like, wow. And I went there, they've got a campus and that was life changing. And then not only- That's was, what it takes, isn't it? Just a little boost, like I said, a little boost from someone that sets it, you off. And, and, and because of that, I was, I was always at the front of the lectures. I always worked hard. I always, it changed my life. And Brunel had a lot of great 
opportunities for me to be the man I am now. Because of Brunel, I was able to get that finance job because of I was the character building. Because of Brunel, I had my project engineer job as a project engineer for a placement in, they only took Brunel students. And because of that, I learned how to be, you know, waking up at five, having that, that hard work ethic, yeah. just getting shit done, like just, because they're on the tools, right, these guys. And I like, shut the fuck up, mate, just fucking do it. Just yeah. stop moaning and bitching, right? Which is <laughs> the soft side. Yeah, ain't got yeah, ain't got time for that. And it's that soft side and they, they, they cultured me and molded me into that and then I got into the finance well broker is fast 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 pace boiler room which is great and because of that that made me who I am and on top they also had a outstanding reward so I had a master's in mechanical engineering I haven't said this before but I got offered a PhD to wow. do a solar power hectocopter where we won the best award of the whole uni for uh, from Bosch and Bosch gave us a prize a prize money of £2,000 and that helped me to survive to find a job to not make my mum worry to not carry on doing Usually. three jobs yeah. but it's also a reward for putting in effort isn't yeah, it yeah we know, worked very you know, hard ground it in, you know? exactly that and because of that I am now and it's the same thing and it's cycles and God is good and good things come back and it's karma because Brunel extend, not only did they extend the hand but not only did they have that helping hand from Bosch I am now that individual that's doing that the same so I'm looking to mentor looking to put for scholars looking to uh, like sponsor them and mentor them and take Brilliant. them to the next level because my son will never know it's like as parents, right? Yeah, you're trying to take, take to the next level, aren't you? Yeah, like our parents did best they could for us. We would do the best we could for them. But at the same time, I don't want my kids to think like that's the norm. So that's why I'm doing all of this so they can see, listen, you see these people struggling? That was dad once. You just need to understand that. Yeah. And that's what I ask Yeah, it's because it's not. I don't. I don't mind them appreciate like living the life that they live, and I also don't mind them enjoying it. But I do mind if you take it for granted and I do mind if you judge other people because don't forget that was dad one day and I hate like I literally cannot tolerate that it's how you treat people is it's not how you treat me because now I've become someone to some degree it's how you treat the staff how you treat the waiter because how you treat the waiter if you treat him like shit and you're treating me nice well technically when I was the waiter you would have treated me like shit anyway so that shows your true colours so yeah that's the next step I think for there's me. someone in the room that says respect's a two way street isn't yeah, it yeah exactly it's, uh, exactly get, get <laughs> it, is, it is a two way street exactly that exactly that so yeah that's the next goals for me hopefully and just so see do you it. still do you still set up your day day to day activities like you used to you be, are you up early and still looking at markets still yeah. Trading, or is it all more you're a little bit from the sound of it a bit more systematically automated with I've got a team yeah. so uh, there's only so far you can go by yourself mm. I have a very big team um, my team in the content the real estate my businesses and something that we're launching as well so it, my team are really really good in taking everything hands on I still work the same hours I'm still up at like six ish but I spend the morning just myself planning the day prepping it's a I think the main thing that's changed now is I spend more family time and I try to also spend quality family time, which is sometimes very difficult to juggle because you've got all these things like the spinning plate, but then I'm trying to be with my son whilst spinning the plate. So that's the thing I'm trying to learn to be better. Because I've heard from, you know, you, you see some of the, the, the Titans having their round tables and saying, you know, as well as they've done, they hate, you know, it's something that you wouldn't advise people to do because you hate it to be finance. It's difficult, trading is difficult. And, yeah. and from what I've heard from some of these interviews is, People's, regardless of how successful they are, and they could be an influencer and don't need the trading anymore, mm -hmm. they still want to trade because they love it. And, that's, yes. and they say that's the reason why they made it in the first place. As I, I absolutely agree on that. The only reason they made it in the first place is because they had the passion for it. Because yeah. that's why people gave up on the struggle. Because how bad do you want it? Like, you obviously didn't want it that bad. You gave up, motherfucker. You know what I mean? Is it? Exactly. Like, <laughs> suck it up and stay with it. I mean, that's life as well, though. It's like, how bad do you really want it? Do you want to be in shape? Do you want to be financially free? Do you want to be the person you want to be? No one's going to do it for you. Like, you want to be in shape. You want to make money. Like, how? Like, I can't do it for you. Like, even if I give you it, that's just charity. Like, here. But if I die, like, you're done for. You ain't got the skill. You ain't got the ability. You ain't got the resilience. You ain't got the persistence. You got nothing. And that's why it is a you versus you. <laughs> and what's the me versus me? Yeah. Me versus me. Is, that's it. Like, me versus me. So that whole statement is the biggest thing for our brand and what we kind of really say is because in this day and age of social media it's very easy to see the grass is greener mm. and also the instant like instant messaging instant love instant delivery instant food instant everything but when you see that all the time it can make you feel very insignificant it's like I can take a trade and hit 10k then you can see next man he can do 100k he can do a million if someone's got two million in front of everyone someone's got a bigger dick but the problem with that is it makes you feel like shit but then again it's like well where did I start 
how, what was their journey? What was their chapter? Don't compare their chapter 20 to your chapter one. It's not really the same thing. Exactly. exactly. So it's, it's always the journey of me versus me and you versus you because we have to, well, for me and actually the statement from me to speak from that is none of these people that I don't know at the moment or have an opinion or whatever affect my bank account, affect my life or affect anything. They weren't there. And also a big thing is, and this is one thing I hone on, is when I was fucking struggling, when I had like serious depression, my life was just abysmal and all of this shit. Where the fuck were you guys? And also... It, I got myself out of that. So it's me that got me out of that. I did that. I got to where I am. I am who I am. And I'm integral. I'm honest. I'm sincere. I'm the man I wanted to be. And I'm going where I want to go. It's not where you want to go. I want to go. So that's why it's, it's always me versus me. And I imperatively encourage people to be you versus you because that's all you that's what you're there to do is just to be you you can never ever impress anyone else you can never ever do this for someone else the only two people is god and your children that's it they're the only people that truly matter on this grand scheme of things but other than that it is you versus you me versus me well, well it's really profound it's it's impressive I'm, yeah. yeah really impressed with that yeah um, appreciate it. outside that then so you've got this love for yourself and you've got <laughs> your family yeah. I like you saying that <laughs> What else do you do? Do you love me as what well? Go, well oh, we're, we're bonding. <laughs> we're bonding. going out now. <laughs> <laughs> what, what else do you do with your life? Is there anything that you do? Do you think, is there an escape that you need? Or have you got um, enough going on that you're, t you're completely busy all the time? Do you know what? People say balance, but I don't really have a balance anymore. I think after you have kids, you know what I mean? No, exactly. <laughs> you can't, like, what am I going to do? Go away. I get, I try to do two or three days away. Uh, as me and Al always say, like, just once a year, like, two, three days, just get a little... A reset. Reset, yeah. yeah. Have a little reset, and then you're you're kind of good. But um, I think for a day-to-day -day perspective, is for my mental health, is gym. Yeah. Like, I, I, I lo used to love bodybuilding. I still do. I just don't do it as much for myself anymore. I run a lot more now, just to for my kids because he just he's everywhere yeah. I don't want to be tired you know what I mean and also when it's sports day I want to be the dad that fuck <laughs> I got shit spikes up. on yeah you? I'm like I'm going on <laughs> off fuck shit up um, but yeah it's, it's, it's mainly gym gym is like the clarity for my mental health in all realms just it's got to be balanced mm. for everything you say the determination yeah, is, yeah, is yeah. you and there's a the balance yeah because gym I get I feel like all my thoughts are clear after like the banging and clanging the just me versus me and then all the stress all the people pissing me off all the things that I've compounded over the day in the gym is just after I'm done it's gone it's like whatever I've got a sol I've either found a solution because I've been working out and I've been thinking about it got a solution or I've let it go as the stoic side of it can, can be yeah, yeah right before we finish that's all yeah. the positivity out of the way <laughs> we started off with one gripe and you said you got a few more so is there anything else that mm. has upset you about this industry that has helped get you out of a mess has done the same for a lot of other people I mean and you've, and you've seen all this these, these, you know, we'll call them scammers. You might have yeah, worse I, words for them. I think it's more of a statement rather than a, a gripe or a positive or anything like this. So Andrew NFX, who you have on this podcast, who got banned from like five million and all this stuff, he said something which is pretty cool and I never thought about, but it does rub me. It's like we are, you've been in the financial industry and I think what really grinds us a little bit to some degree is you get all these rappers and this all this stuff that kind of, yeah, he's, I was laughing already. It's like, cool, if you want to be financially free from your way, that's kind of cool, but don't, like, bring us all down, you mm. know? Like, we were, like, especially with ACG, and I love the way they move when we first talked and bonded, is because I worked in a brokerage firm. I understood, like, how hard that really was to stay regulated, to do it ethically, Absolutely. to work with your clients, to understand truly fund One management. slip and you, you're in all sorts of mess. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas now, like you say, with the scammers and things like that, people can scam and keep scamming. And that's just crazy to me. It's crazy. Even if, like, the whole scamming thing, if you can do that, you do you, man. Like, you versus your man. Fuck that. you got to sleep at night with that. You got, when you... At well, the end of, mirror, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Once you're done, if you lie to yourself and you're okay with that, that's cool. But like I said, your kids are going to watch that. Your kids are going to have to deal with that feedback. Your kids are going to have to follow through. See that year after see year. That year, after year. When you're gone, your kids are going to deal with that. So that's the legacy you're, you're, leaving, building, you're yeah. fucking leaving behind. And then at the end of it, I don't care if you're religious or not or whatever. When you're done and you're dusted, facing God, universe, whatever you want to face, that's the person you've got to say. Like, and they re The Viking. The, yeah, the Viking there. You, you re he replays your life. Uh, if you think about it like this, which I think is quite interesting because I, I heard it before, it's you get to see the David Goggins version actually replay your life there. You see everything replayed. How do you truly feel about that? And then he shows you the version you could have been. Fuck. 
You know what I mean? That's mad. And it's insane. But I think with the whole industry and the way things are going and obviously not just South Capital, many good firms like FTMO have really held the stand in and whatnot. I think it's going down the more professional route Yeah. because number one, when you can't manage the company and you're not professional, it will catch up to you. It's as simple as that. But when you are, you'll be long standing. You'll have the time. You'll be able to pursue and perceive and people will see that over a period of time. So I think the new route is we'll just see more professionalism and come into it and more true education and then hopefully the next stage because it's still like... I mean, it, all, it all goes back to it. It's, it's, it's infant um, stage. I think it was Uber in my fee days, mm -hmm. most good faith and the my word is my bond and all yeah, that. And, yeah. and we're going back to it. At the end it's, of the day, you've got to trust yeah, each other. It's, yeah, and I think it's uh, the, the way of a man. <laughs> that's exactly it. So, yeah, yeah man, that's that's all I have to say with the the, the, the the industry, I think. Is there any like other things I think about? Oh, really? Only top firms will last. That's it. Really we're true. here. Yeah, that's it. Hey, <laughs> hey, there you go. Plug for Alpha Capital. <laughs> we need the man back with the board now. Yeah, we need, just... we need Alex in the tutu. <laughs> Well, anyway, Danny, really appreciate you coming you today to speak to us. And that was a really candid interview. <laughs> really, really, you know, we're going to love each other for a long time. That's Let's it. Feel the love. Thanks for having me. It's been me. an absolute pleasure. <laughs> we'll the there we go. <laughs> Cheers, my friend. <laughs>